I think it's safe to say that when I was a kid, I was fairly obsessed with the Ghostbusters. I had to have watched the movie at least a hundred times. I had all the action figures. The cartoon was a part of my everyday life. Ghostbusters was up there with Ninja Turtles, Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, things that occupied little James's uh, imagination. And so I remember being very curious when I was a kid, where was Ghostbusters 2? I remember asking my mother as if she would know, why isn't there a Ghostbusters 2? It seemed obvious to me that this should be an ongoing franchise. And in 1989, I finally got the movie that I had been wanting. And while many people my age may have been disappointed, I was not. Today, let's talk about Ghostbusters 2. I love this movie. I love this movie. I always have loved this movie. Age has not changed my uh, opinion of it. It is not as good as Ghostbusters. But in its own right, it is, uh, it's a fantastic movie. I, I laugh during it. I feel the stakes for the characters. Everything that I loved about Ghostbusters 1 is present in Ghostbusters 2 which a lot of people say is the problem. It is too close of a sequel. It recycles the plot from the first movie. Maybe, but can't we say that about just about every James Bond movie? I mean, really, if you look at like every, you know, especially the earlier Bond movies, it's, it's Basically the same plot time and time again I'm not criticizing those movies but I'm just saying that we seem to make uh, exceptions for for some movies and other movies can't get away with the same thing you know the lethal weapon movies every one of them is Mel Gibson's crazy Danny Glover is sane and uh, you know, he wants to retire and he keeps, he's too old for this shit. He keeps getting dragged back into it. The Dirty Harry movies are kind of the same plot every time. And we're okay with that. The Friday the 13th or, or a lot of horror movies, it's literally almost the exact same plot over and over again. Star Trek recycles actual shots from previous movies. And yet, somehow, Ghostbusters was an exception. Ghostbusters was supposed to be something radically different in people's minds, which I never understood. It's set five years after the original. Uh, the Ghostbusters have disbanded. Um, after the events of the first movie, they were sued into oblivion. And, you know, they've all gone their separate ways. But Sigourney Weaver's uh, newborn baby has is being haunted, and she needs her, the help of the the guys that saved her before, and they you know uh, they all come back together to help their friend, and they get dragged into uh, a, a, another world threatening event. Now this movie is, you could say, softer than the original. Um, if the original, you know, it was it, it was rated PG for 1984, but PG-13 wasn't really yet a thing, I think now it would absolutely get a PG-13 rating. But Ghostbusters 2 probably wouldn't. It would probably stick with the PG. It is a softer movie, and I think that really comes from the fact that the cartoon had been out. So they knew more kids were going to be coming to it. And was that the right way of handling it? I think so, in my opinion. I love the sort of harder edge of the first movie. But 
you know, Ghostbusters became, for adults, Ghostbusters was a, a, uh, a fun movie that they all went to go see and enjoyed. For us kids, it was a phenomenon. It was something that we, we, we wanted to grow up and be Ghostbusters. And the cartoon was geared towards us. The brand became geared towards us. So the sequel being softer, being a little less edgy, made sense. I think that there are parts in this movie that, that rival anything from the first movie. There are Bill Murray, a lot of people say Bill Murray looks disinterested and he doesn't want to be there. I utterly disagree. Bill Murray is on point in this movie, scene for scene. Harold Ramis, Dan Aykroyd, both bring their A-games. This is something that I think everybody wanted to do and was okay with until, not even up until the movie came out, because when the movie came out, it was a hit. I think it was years later when people said, oh, Ghostbusters 2 wasn't very good, that Bill Murray and, and some of the people involved said, oh, oh, yeah, it wasn't very good, was it? There's still, the it's to me, it's got the funniest Egon scene out of either of the movies. The, you know, the courtroom scene where Rick Moranis is defending them and, you know, his argument to the judge is, one time I turned into a dog and they helped me. And he goes and he sits down and Harold Ramis just looks at him and says, thank you, Lewis, short but pointless. That's funny stuff. There's some great lines in here. Suck in the guts, guys. We're the Ghostbusters. The movie, I never feel like when I watch it, like, oh, these are completely different characters. They lost the thread, blah, blah, blah. It feels like a proper continuation. I feel like this could have been, if Bill Murray had not been such a prick, and I love Bill Murray, I'm wearing a Bill Murray t-shirt right now, but if he had not been such a prick, and if he had just signed up in the 90s and made Ghostbusters 3, I think that this middle one, Ghostbusters 2, I think it would be regarded like the Temple of Doom of the trilogy. You know, the, the, the one that kind of stands out a little bit. People don't like it quite as much as the first and third. But it has its audience. It has its fans. I think that's what it would have been. It's, you know, we're now maybe uh, a, a less than a year away from getting what will be Ghostbusters 3. And <sighs> Ghostbusters Afterlife originally had a place on these shelves. I thought to myself when I saw the trailer, that actually looks pretty good. I think I'm going to have to add that to the list. And then it got delayed. And as soon as it got delayed to March, I just felt like, ugh. The... the the other movies that I'm going to get are going to be already on the shelves at that point. I kind of want to close up shop in 2020. I really don't want to have this thing lingering. Ghostbusters Afterlife, in order to make it onto these shelves, has got to be... It's got to be Ghostbusters 3. It can't just be good. It has to be Ghostbusters 3. It has to be the closest thing we're ever going to get to it. It can't just be, oh, look, here are the original Ghostbusters in a, you know, 15-second cameo at the end of the movie. And now we're passing the torch on to, you know, uh, Egon's grandkids or whatever. It's got to be Ghostbusters 3. And I still believe that as good as it might be, for me, at least, it won't be as good as Ghostbusters 2. I love Ghostbusters 2. I watch it just about every year. 
it's not as good. Ghostbusters is a five star movie. Ghostbusters 2, three and a half stars. I think it's a, it's a completely worthy sequel. The fact that it doesn't quite live up to the original is no reason for people to hate it. Are there any similarities in the book that pertain to your real life? A fictional autobiography. Occasionally, situations that are taken almost verbatim, but uh, so I sat down and I just started. Dreams are the killers of men, really. Everyone chases after them, believing he'll be the one to make it. Today, I'm finished. I'm here to do the people of this country a favor. Who said those dogs at the CIA have no say in the politics of my country? Um, did that fix the world? Did his death change history for the better? For a time. Could it be you don't have the stomachs for it? Could it be you've never held a gun before in your life than now as you stand in your face to face with a great man? They complain about bad dreams, nonsense like that. Silly stuff. We all get along with bad dreams. Every 4th of July, I break out in cold sweat and put them in the of fireworks blowing up all night. I want to hide away all day. When the when final, final note was played, was played his, his wife, wife and child, child would, would cheer, cheer so, so loud, loud he, would he would hear them amidst, amidst the din. The din. I have, I have learned, learned that people move. People, people move, move and, and travel, travel and, and die. I don't, I don't wish, wish to live in my memories, but to make new ones, so that I may leave this place that no longer holds joy for me and set out to find new joy in other worlds. sort of gave myself the challenge of, okay,